Palace one, Everton two. Joined by Adrian. Here. Adrian, it's it's a disappointing result, but at the end of the day, you also have to give credit to Everton for how they played. Um, first loss of the season. What was your overall thoughts on the game? We were robbed. I mm. that was. I don't know how any person could get their hand out of the way in time. So you know, I just think we were robbed on that. Uh, but then again, we. We got the same sort of thing last week against Man United, so I suppose it's come back to bite us. Yeah, um, to, the only problem that I have with the VAR decision is that you cannot physically move your arm away that quickly because the ball was literally it was it was headed down to Joel Wood's hands. And what can Joel Wood do? It's not like Joel Wood had like a good five to ten seconds to think about it and move. It was it was just blasted. And it was not like it was yeah. a goal-scoring opportunity as well. So, so what can he do? I, I, I think if you look at the way he was standing, he was trying to move away, like turn and go with the ball. And that's when it hit his hand. I, I can't understand why. He even went and looked to see if it was handballed. And he should have realised that he, he hadn't. Like, it wasn't uh, no way. But I think... I think the problem is the slow motion because they look at it in slow motion and they don't see that in real time, Joel Ward cannot react as fast as the ball hit his hand. And yeah. that's the problem with VAR, where you look at all these replays and you look at slow down, but you don't take into consideration that these players are not playing in slow motion. They're not robots. They're actual humans playing football. But VAR doesn't take that into consideration. And we see that with offsides. We see that with penalty decisions. But I guess last week we saw it with Lindelof decision where we got a penalty it was a which was a bit controversial. But let's talk about the football. Um, the first goal that we conceded, I thought it was pretty poor. What do you make of it? Um, people, Some people are blaming Mitchell. I don't think it's Mitchell's fault. I thought that was a brilliant ball into the box uh, from Rodriguez. And I thought Kiate just switched off there. He switched off for a second. And that's what happens in the Premier League. When you switch off against these types of players, they will punish you. Yeah, de definitely. Like, it, like Mitchell... Like you can't blame the lad. He's he, he's new to the Premiership. He's only had a few games. Like lost a bit of concentration, hence the cross came in. Like, but you know, I think you know Calvert Loon. We've got to be on top of him. Look at the evidence. Uh, the evidence the defence with Zaha. When Zaha had the ball, he had two or three players on him every time. So Zaha was out of the game for that reason. Like, and Lewin's slight of form, you you know, you can't leave a guy like that, you know, to his own devices. And like, Goy, uh, like, maybe he could have saved it as well. Hmm. Like, you know, it went through his arms, more more or less. But, you know, some, da some days you do, some days you don't. Yeah. It's you just the way it goes. You mentioned Zaha there. He didn't have his greatest of games, but I'm going to say this. It felt like watching the old world with Zaha, and this is not his fault. I'm not mentioning that, but I feel like he missed a bit of Jeffrey Slup there because at times he was a bit isolated and Everton could send three guys to the world with Zaha and take him out of the game because we had no other real threat. I mean, as he started down the left-hand side, what do you make of his performance? And also... Do you think that Jeffrey Schlupp, this game proved that Jeffrey Schlupp means more than what us Palace fans think he, he is to this Palace team? Yeah, I think, actually, I think you've hit the nail on the head. You know, we missed him today. We missed his, like, pressing and charging back. Like, you know, he, he was all over the place. Don't I can't knock Eze. I think he had a great game today. Mm -hmm. I think I would rather see him in the AU role mm -hmm. that than out, out wide, right? but otherwise, you know, you, you can't knock him. He was captain last minute, right? you know, because uh, Schlupp had a, a strain of some kind, you know, but, you know, I don't think we had a bad game, but I've got to like, take my hat off. I think the last three games, right, even though we didn't win, Townsend has been my man. You know? He's brilliant. He, you know, look at him today. He was back. He was like backing up um, Waldy. He made a few really telling challenges down, like 
in defence, and he was up, you know, doing his best up front. You know, you can't knock him. You really can't. He really wants to stay, I think. Like, you know, he's, he's got a year left on his contract. Maybe he's playing for another contract. Yeah, I think even if he is, just like the Wolf Rizar situation, I'm happy with it, with the way that he's playing. Because last season, he wasn't really... He wasn't really, he wasn't there. When he played, he was non-existent at, at certain times and we didn't see this Andrew Townsend. But today, I think that was one of the positives. There were other positives as well where Andrew Townsend tracking back, going forward as well, down the right-hand side. Normally, in these last two games, we focus on down the left-hand side because of Jeffrey Schlapp, Wolfrid's out. But this game, I feel like the most fretful chances that we had came from the right-hand side. We won free kicks there. We put crosses into the box from there. And Joe Ward, and Townsend deserve credit for that. Um, but in the second half, we kept the ball. But this is what I was talking about, Adrian. I just feel like what's been the difference between the two games has been that we've been counter attacking. We haven't been at passing side. But in the second half, it felt like we just slowed it down a bit because we didn't have the pace. And I feel like it shows that we need to go and get another player because mm -hmm. we don't have much pace for players in our teams, apart from Jeffrey Schlapp and Wilfred Zaha. Eze, of course, is not the slowest player, but he's not on the same level as them two players. No, but I, I think Eze will get there, guy. Hmm. You know, but the more he plays, the more confident. Because I think he got into some good positions today, guy, right, outside that box, um, and he could have really fought instead of placing it. He could have had a shot. You know, like, um a couple of the the free kicks he took, he sort of floated it in the box, and I think if he had hit, put some welly behind it. He might have actually, you know, reached a player or even like, had a chance to score from a free kick. That, but give the boy, I think, give that boy a chance because I think he will, he will come up really good. You know, yeah. he's showing the touches. Like he's not afraid to go forwards. Like, I think, I think one thing we did miss today was we didn't press high like we did against Man United. I think that was where we went wrong today. Yeah, we gave them so much time on the ball, especially in the first half where, even though in the first half, even in the second half, when I was just looking, I was like, that's what's missing as well. We, against United, we pressed them, our front three pressed them. But today, we saw it. We just let Everton have the ball. Maybe we were just too scared with spaces being open because they've got some very talented footballers. Uh, but it happened. We lost. Due to a controversial decision, I think, um, with the penalty. If it was a penalty, penalty, it would have been what I expected, a one will draw. Um, but looking ahead to the next game against Chelsea, what's your thoughts on it? And anything that you'll change, let's say if that Jeffrey Schlupp is fit, would you put him back into the side? And that means that Eze um, has to be dropped. Um, actually, yeah, I, I would put Slippy back in, guys, mm. because he gives that. Or if I... Uh, PVA is fit. I would put PVA in Schlupp's like position yeah. because he, yeah, because I think he like he can get forward, but he'll also get back. Like, and I wouldn't drop Messi. I'd drop A. I, drop a. I, yeah. I just, I don't know. There's just like actually, you mentioned it in one of your uh, tweets. I think he's tired. Like, you know, he's not getting forward as much. He's not pressing as much. Like, you know, he's trying his hardest. Don't, like, you know, don't get me wrong. But I just think put him on the bench, let him sort of rest and come back and do a bit part. And also show him that he's not in, infallible. You know, yeah. he's part of the team. And the team, like, you know, if the team's doing well without him, then he's going to warm the bench. So who who comes in for Jordan are you? Is it Ben Teke then? Because Michi Bachelor yeah, can't start I, in this game. I, I, I think SA or Ben Teke because SA is more a number 10 than any, actually, I'd say anyone we've got in our team. Like, yeah. because he, like, you know, or we play a diamond midfield. But under Hodgson, that's the thing. I think Eze is perfectly suited to the central position. Yeah. But we play 4-4-2 and we don't have that central attacking midfielder position because the two midfielders that we've got are holding midfielders. And that's what makes Roy happy that he has them defensive players there. 
And this is probably the most attacker we're going to be because we saw it even when we had Ruben off the sheet. The 4 4 2 formation worked perfectly under Roy Hodgson. So I don't really see it changing. I don't really see Eze playing in central positions, but maybe Roy can switch it about. But thank you for joining me, Adrian. And hopefully next week we'll be talking about a surprise Palace result. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs>